I'm back in my back cave, ready to help you guys out again. Let's get it. Welcome back to Lizard of Doom. I am Max. If you don't know the format of this lizard lesson, I am picking people from my Discord to help. They are posting in the critique section and they want improvements. I'm not just picking on random people. And today I'll be helping one of my newest Patreon members, Mo. But first of all, let me tell you about this week's sponsor. This week's sponsor is My Mini Factory and Night Models. They are collaborating and bringing you the models from the Night Models DC game as printable STLs. Let me show you a little more. At the moment, you can just invest in the tier you want to, and there are tons of tiers to choose from. There's loads of stuff in every Every tier so you definitely get your money's worth with these STLs or you can go all in and that's not too expensive for all of the miniatures in this range. All of them! The first DC models will be coming to Frontiers, my mini factory's own community driven funding platform in October 2024 and this includes 125 highly detailed downloadable STL files for at home printing. They have also very kindly provided me with some of these nice, highly detailed sculpts. Look at the texture in the bat suit there. Ooh! To do this painting tutorial. I also think Aquaman's really nicely done. If I can get this in focus for a second, look at the fish scale texture on his chest there. Nice! So I now have an important decision to make. Thank you, Night Models and My Mini Factory, for sponsoring this video. This is my lineup. I have a lot to choose from. In amongst all these heroes, there can only be one choice. The most popular of them all. The GOAT. The daddy of the DC universe. Batman. Right, Mo, here we are. Here's the help I promised you. This is going to be a good look at your miniatures that you submitted in that section of the Discord, and then we will get on with it. So you've requested some help with painting in general, but more specifically, edge highlighting. So I'm gonna have a little look now at your models that you've submitted there and give you some, some things you've done well and some things that could be improved, and then we'll get onto that edge highlighting. So looking at this guardsman with the plasma pistol here, that I can see that is a very, very neat paint job. You've got all the colors in exactly the right places. So top marks for that. I know you haven't been in this hobby long painting. You have just joined the Discord and you have just got into miniature painting yourself. What I can see here is quite a reliance on contrast paints. As someone who's new into it, you would definitely benefit from learning to base layer and then highlight from like that, rather than relying on contrast paints. You've got to weigh up whether you wanna be a fast painter or a good painter. They are very rarely intersected and contrast paints are a speed method that yes, can be used and I use them, but in specific places and for specific techniques, I would never paint a whole miniature with contrast paints. They do have their place, but it's very beneficial for a beginner to start to learn where to place the highlights and also the shadows manually so you understand how light works across the mini and don't just rely on a product like this, which goes in the gaps and shades them for you. Now onto the second guardsman in the armor. Again, very neat, very nice paint job. This is one where you're gonna benefit from learning to edge highlight. I can see a little bit of an attempt across the bottom of his plate there, and a little bit around the shoulder pad on the side. Uh, it's quite chunky, and this is what I'm gonna help you, and hopefully these techniques will help you learn this. What I'm gonna talk about um, I've got a lot of practice in this kind of painting and edge highlighting like this and it'll take you a little bit of time so don't be annoyed if you're not brilliant at it to start with. Very nice job on this Skaven by the way. This is a very nice colour scheme and I, and I do like how you've done it. Everything is so neat so congratulations on just getting into painting like this and being able to put the colour on without going over the lines. It's a problem I see with a lot of beginners um, but again this could use a bit of edge highlighting just to separate those areas and bring the color value up a little bit because it is very dark, but it is very good. I don't want to just crap on it. <laughs> it is very good. This Skaven's a good paint job. Let us get into the technique that Mo mostly wanted help with, which is edge highlighting. I could see that attempt on that guardsman, and I think that is why they have asked for this technique. Let's go. 
So I've painted up Batman to a standard I'm quite happy with, mainly using glazing. Check out the last painting video I did, the last lizard lesson on how to glaze. This is how I've got this to the standard it is now. And I'm ready to add a little bit of definition to this model, and some edge highlighting. You can see that this is all being glazed up from black with a very dark blue. These are the colors I've used from that. I've used Vallejo black and then followed it with some dark sea blue up from that to create that gradient. Now the first highlight color we'll be using to edge highlight is dark sea blue. I'm just reinforcing the edges and making sure I have an opaque coat before I move on to anthracite gray. This will be the highest highlight I do on these areas. I don't feel like I need to push it any higher than this. The paintbrush I'll be using is a 3 slash 0 size pure Kalinsky sable brush. This has got a very nice fine point on it. The bristles stay tight due to its Kalinsky sable construct. It has a very nice tip for when we do have to unfortunately use that, but we're trying not to. I'll show the technique on the edge of this blade. If I use the back of this knife as an edge on the model and a bigger brush just to demonstrate. I'm not trying to run the tip across the edge like this. You can see me slipping. This is me, you know, trying 50% to keep it in line, not exaggerating too much. But what we'll be doing is using the edge of the brush. Using the edge like this, you can glide it across that surface and make sure it is not wiggling about. So this is me actually trying to keep on the edge with the tip. Oh, little wiggle in the middle. Yeah, not great but you need to rotate the model you're painting so the edge is more prominent and glide the edge of your brush along. Now I will be getting close to the tip of the brush when doing this on small details, but guaranteed I'm still using the edge. Just to demonstrate the technique here on Batman's cape, this is quite a pronounced edge, so it's quite easy to demonstrate on. I am doing this on hard mode. Warhammer miniatures have much chunkier edges due to their art style. These DC miniatures are more true scale, so it does make it a little bit harder, but this is just me showing you the technique on the edge of the cape. A nice chunky edge like you'll get on a Warhammer miniature. Now you can't really see the difference in color there, but that means I did my glazing job correctly. When it comes to doing it on the miniature, you can see I am using just under the tip. I'm not using the very tip, I'm using the side of the brush still to make sure I get these crispy lines across all of these pockets on here, giving them a little bit of definition where the light would be hitting them from the top. This will be done on the sides as well, as if the light is spinning down the sides and they'll pick out from the belt a little bit better then. The way I do that is move the miniature, not the brush. You can see I've got three points of contact here. My wrists are on the edge of the table and my finger is touching the base and the stand that I've got him on, just using a cheap bit of cork and blue tag for this. I've moved the miniature, but my brush always stays at a comfortable angle. That is the way to get the best control while you are edge highlighting and doing other bits in this manner. Once I was happy with those edge highlights on the belt, I then did a little bit on the chest, on the bat symbol on the chest. Now this is even more difficult because this is not very raised at all. So I had to use pretty much the tip here for this and you can see that it goes on a lot chunkier. So if you can use the edge of your brush, do. But if you can't, you're just gonna have to be very careful. But I'm not too fussed about this one. It's the anthracite gray layer that will matter a lot more when doing the chest. And I'll show you how to sort that out in a minute. Talking of anthracite gray, here we go. Making sure you haven't got too much paint on the brush is a must. I take little bits off on my hand like this because it doesn't dry out the brush like doing it on tissue. And I'm just running it across the same area on the tops to make sure that I have got the tops being the lightest point while I am doing this edge highlighting because my light source for this paint job is from above. The way I'll do this on the side of the pockets is I will not extend the line all the way down like I did with the last edge highlight. I'll only do it on maybe the top 50% of the pocket to make it look like the light is spilling down but not reaching all the way to the bottom of those pockets. Again, shifting the model, three points of contact, and then you get the best control. And there we have my finished highlighted belt. It pops out a lot more from the body now, giving it a lot of definition. We are looking at it very close up. On the tabletop, this will look a hell of a lot more subtle and be nice 
and detailed compared to that belt blending in and being a black amorphous blob. Now we're going to handle the bat symbol on the chest. Luckily I've gone with the bat fleck version and that is a little bit chunkier than the normal bat symbol but again I'm having to use the tip and I'm making these highlights too chunky and a little bit too messy for my liking. I'm trying my best but also it's not a competition. I'm not going to get this right first time. I'm not competing against anyone. I can take my time and what I will do is work back in with the previous colour just to correct any mistakes that I've got there and make those highlights a little bit thinner by putting this previous colour more on the main body of the piece, leaving those edge highlights along the edge a lot thinner and again three points of contact, elbows on the desk and hands together touching. Once I have done that I just picked out a few other bits I wanted to with this anthracite grey. Just before we close out this video, I've got another little sneaky tip for you. If you don't own the correct color to highlight with, like going up in brightness, check this out. Ice yellow is gonna be an amazing color to have in your toolbox. This is the Vallejo one. Other companies do an ice yellow. This is amazing color because it contains some luminescent yellow, some fluo yellow. This is what you're gonna to use to mix highlights rather than a white. Let me show you why. So taking my wet palette, just random colors I've got on it from the projects I've been painting at the moment, this bright red. Say I don't own a brighter red to then edge highlight that. Could I use white or could I use ice yellow? Let me show you the difference. If you're going to use white, you're gonna end up desaturating your colors. This is obviously not good. I also switched to a larger brush just to mix colors so I don't mess up my nice one. This is an old battered brush. So I'm mixing these paints, trying to make a highlight roughly the same tone as each other. And then I will show you the difference and how much the white desaturates compared to this ice yellow. So first we'll paint the white on my finger here. You can see this red has gone very pink, which is the white doing what I said it would and desaturating compared to the ice yellow, which still has the nice warm tones of that yellow, but is a lot lighter than the original red. This is kind of a shocking contrast when you push it even further. The next thing I'm gonna do is mix more white and more ice yellow into those samples and then push it further. The white I'm expecting to blow out and be almost white, but the ice yellow one, I'm expecting to still show a lot of that red color through. Now this is pushed out like to the extreme. This is not what I'd be using generally, but you can see the tones of those, exactly as I said, that one's white, but that one's still got the warmth of the ice yellow and the tones of the red. Neat little trick for you. So thank you to My Mini Factory and Night Models for sponsoring this video. Check them out in the link down below. Thank you to my Patreons as well. That will be linked in the top corner now and also down below. Thank you for helping support this channel. So remember to subscribe. I haven't said that the entire video. Professional, I know. Check out the merch, lizardadoom.com. And of course, check out the sponsor. They come to me for these videos and pay me and it's all reliant on you guys going and checking them out as well so i know i've said it two or three times before click that link down there join the discord and start posting in that mini critique i pick them randomly out of there for someone i think i can help before i'm about to make one of these videos leave a like for the like throne and a comment for the algorithm gods remember it is not a pile of shame it is a pile of future fun see you next time kids peace